Begin the Gemara on that Mem on Medalef, at the top of the Yomit, six lines from the top of the Yomit. So the Gemara here is discussing the halachas of Giluach, a Nazar may not cut his hair. So we had different halachas regarding this, exactly with what are you not allowed to cut your hair, is it with a razor dafke, is it with other, with a scissors or other things. So the Gemara here continues with more details regarding this halacha. Six lines from the top of the Yomit. Omar Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda said as follows. There are three different details that come together here. Lil Kais Ba'achas. To get Malkus for cutting your hair during your Naziris, even if you cut only one hair, you get Malkus for that. La'akev B'Shtayim. When it comes to fulfilling the mitzvah of cutting the hair by the conclusion of the Naziris, to hold back that this mitzvah is not considered fulfilled properly, that's if you left out two hairs. Lister, now if in the middle of your Naziris, what we said before, and the Mishnah and the Gemara, that when you cut your hair in the middle of your Naziris, so you have to keep the days over again, to have 30 days without cutting your hair, when is that? That's only if most of the hair of his head was cut off. Then he's going to have to keep again 30 days, or to have a full 30 days for the conclusion of his Naziris. And then he finished off, Ubitar. All of this, we're only speaking about if it was done with a razor. Not in any other way. Dafka with a razor. So on this the Gemara asks, Betar in b'midi achrini loy? Rav Chista says that this is only with a razor and not with any other utensil. But Vakatani, we learned before in the Braise, Minayin l'rabba, he says, Kol avirin. From where do we know that any other way that you take off the hair, it's included as well, not only a razor. And it brought before the Pasuk, it said, uh, it said in the Pasuk, uh, either the limit was from Kodesh Yiyeh, or because it says Lo Yaver. So why are we saying here, Dafka, a razor? Eleime Keentar. What it means is that he takes off the hair, he shaves it completely, just like it's done with a razor. So even with a different utensil, it's also the same Isser, or the same Mitzvah, but it just, when it says Tar, it means like it's done with a razor, that shaves completely. Tanya Nami Ochi, we see this in Abraisa as well. The Abraisa says, Nazir, Shetolash, Miret, Sifsif, he pulled out the hair, or he used a cream to take out the hair, or Sifsif Kolshu, he, he was taking out hairs another way with his hands, even a tiny drop. He's not going to have to be Seiser, the days of his Naziris, to count all the full days he needs for the conclusion of Naziris, unless it's moving the hairs of most of his head. Ubitar. And if it's done with a razor. And again, over here, the razor means, like we said before, ke'entar. That, uh, because it, 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 it said over here that, uh, yeah, talash, all these different things. It doesn't have to be dafka with a razor, but it means that he pulled it out completely similar to a razor. Just like we said regarding the mitzvah of cutting the hair at the conclusion of the Nesiris, that if you left out two hairs, so your mitzvah wasn't done properly, so too, in the middle of Yunaziris, if you cut the hair, even if you just cut two hairs, you're going to have to keep over the days in order to get 30 days for the end of Yunaziris. So he argues that Tanakhama said, only if you cut most of the hair of your head, and Abshimah says, even if you just cut two hairs, you're going to have to keep over those days of Yunaziris. Okay, now the Gemara brings a Mishnah in the end of Mesech the Nagoyim which uh, speaks about this subject and brings in other cases as well where there's a halacha, a requirement to cut hair. Tanan so we learned in the Mishnah there, Shloisho Megalchen, there are three different individuals that have to cut the hair from their body. Bitaglachton mitzvah, and cutting the hair is a mitzvah. Nazir, which we're speaking about here, the Nazir actually does not have to cut all the hair of his body, only has to cut the hair from his head. Um a mitzayde when he's metire himself, so he has to shave all the hair on his body. Um and the Leviim, when they are brought into beginning their Aveda of Levia, so they also have to cut and shave all the hair from their body. Which is in Parshas Baal the Pasuk there says. Now, V'kulon shagil chushuloi betar. All of them, they cut their hair, they shave their hair without a razor. Or they or they left over two hairs, lay also v'loiklom. They've done nothing. The mitzvah is not fulfilled. That's the Mishnah. So the Gemara will explain now this Mishnah. Oh, mama. So the Tanah just said here in this Mishnah, the first part of the Mishnah says, Shloisha Megalchim Vitaglachton Mitzvah. There are three that have to shave the hair from their body or only the head by a Nazir, and the Taglachas, the, the cutting of the hair, is a Mitzvah. Pshite, Frekta Gemara, this is obvious. Why does the Tan of the Mishnah have to say this first part? It's Psukim in the Taita. By all three, Nazim, Mitzvah, and Levim, it says clearly in the Taita that he has to cut his hair. 
So the Gemara answer is, Ma'o de teime, mishum iburi seyeru. I would think that the main point that the Teire says is, remove the hair. So if it's just about removing the hair, so vafil is sach nasha, even if you had some kind of a cream or something that could remove hair, and you put that on the body, and that it removes the hair, it's good enough. I don't have to, it doesn't have to be shaved dafke. Kamash malon, that's why the Mishnah begins to say, no, that it has to be dafke, the, these three have to be megaleyach, they have to shave the hair from their body. Um, Kamash Malon uh, Deloy. So it co- comes to teach me that you can't just uh, put cream on your body and you have to dafke, shave the hair. Katani, now the mission here says, Vekulon shel gilchu shaloi betar, that all of them, if they shave their hair without a razor, so the mission says, by all of them, the mitzvah is not going to be fulfilled properly. Okay? So just, just to clarify over here, the pshat on this Mishnah, the pshat that the Gemara just said, the Gemara said that the first part of the Mishnah is coming to teach you that you can't take off the hair with a cream, it has to be taken off, tafke, with a razor. But the Yishayim here ask on that, that's what the first part of the Mishnah is teaching me. It says that clearly in the second part of the Mishnah. In the second part of that Mishnah it says that it has to be tafke with a razor, and if it's done without a razor, you haven't fulfilled your mitzvah. So, so what's the difference between the first and second part of that Mishnah? The answer is, if we would only say the second part of the Mishnah that has to be removed with a razor, you would think it means like with a razor, meaning it has to be shaved completely, but lav dafke that it has to be with an actual razor. First part of the Mishnah is telling you that there's a mitzvah to cut off the hair dafke with a razor. And the second part of the Mishnah is saying, and the way it has to be cut with a razor is completely shaved. Not just to use a razor, but it has to be, com- so there's two details. Number one, it should be done with a razor and it has to be completely shaved. That's the shadow of this Mishnah. Now this, the Gemara asks the question, what's the source for this? When the Mishnah says that if it's done without a tar, without a razor, then the mitzvah is not done properly. The fact that it must be a tar by a nazir, it's understood, because that's what it says in the Torah, that in the time of his naziris, he doesn't use a razor but until it comes to fulfilling the mitzvah. God b'levim k'siv, b'levim also, the Pasuk says in the Pasuk, the Pasuk says there, by vidu tar, al kol b'sarah. That yeah, they have to use a razor on their entire body to remove the hair. Elam mitzayda b'tar min olam. By a mitzayda, the fact that it has to be with a razor, from where do we know this? That it has to be dafka with a razor. So if you'll answer and say, Taisim levim. I could learn out a mitzayda from levim. The Torah says by Levim that they have to remove the hair from the body. And it says the same by Mitzayda. So I learn from one from another. Ma Levim, Shekein Tu'unen Teglachas. Just like the Levim, they have to shave the hair from the body. Ve'ein Teglachton Elo Betar. And the Mitzvah is only with a razor, as the Pasa clearly says. Afeni obvious a Mitzayda. So too, I can learn out from here that by a Mitzayda as well. Shutan Teglachas. He has to cut the hair from his body. Ve'ein Teglachton Elo Betar. So by him as well, it's only with a razor. Says the Gemara, you can't compare to Levim. Ikela Mifrach, this uh, source from Levim can be refuted because by Levim there's a chumre that you don't have by Mitzayda. Ma le Levim shekain tunin tunufe begufam. Pasuk there says by the Levim, what happens? You shave the hair from their body and Aaron Akainis to lift them up. There's a din of tunufe by the Levim that you don't find by Mitzayda or anything else. Time of Mitzayda, the light, the light. By Mitzayda you don't have this Allah of tunufe to lift up the Mitzayda. So you can't learn Mitzayda from the Levim. Ella, says the Gemara, Taisi Menazah. Instead, you could learn out the Halacha by a Mitzayda, that he has to shave his hair with a tar, with a razor. You can learn it out from a Nazir. Ma'al a Nazir. So the Gemara says, no, you can't learn out from Nazir either. Because by Nazir, I also find a specific Chumrah that you don't have by a Mitzayda. Ma'al a Nazir. Shekein karbonoi ton lechem. The Karbonas that a Nazir brings, it has to have the breads that come along with it. So it's an extra chumra we find there. Time of mitzayda, the light by mitzayda you don't find this chumra that has to be brought together with breads. So you can't learn out mitzayda not from levim alone and not from nazir alone. And the Gemara says So you can't learn out from one of them itself. So teisi mitarvein, learn out from both of them together. Hi teisi teisi levim. So from which one are you going to want to learn out? If you want to learn out just from the levim alone, ma the levim. She came to an tunuf for begufa. So from the Levim alone, you can't learn out because they have a chumre that their body has to be lifted up. So nazi yechiach. So therefore, you learn out. You prove from nazir. Nazir, the fact that he has to cut his hair with a razor, even though the body does not have to be lifted up, that shows that this chumre 
that your body has to be lifted up is not the cause for this din. I see by Nazi, even without this Chumrah, the same din applies that you have to use a razor. On the other hand, I can learn not from Nazir alone. Ma'ala Nazir shken karbonet ta'an lechem. Nazir has a Chumrah that the karbonet needs the, the lechem, the bread. So Levim yechichu. So I learned that from Levim, which the, 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 you don't need these breads, and that shows that the breads is not the reason for this halacha. Now, v'chazar adin, with this limu that we want to learn from here, and we push it to here, and to here, but loyri zeh kirizeh, v'loyri zeh kirizeh, Levim and Nazir are not the same. Each one has their own chumre, but they're not the same. The chumre of both of them is not the same. So therefore what we say is, the chumre is not the cause of the din. Because if it would be, so then we don't find that same Chumrah in both places. Rather, this is what the Gemara always says, Hatzad, Hashav, Shebehen, we look at the common denominator. And that is, Shehein, Tu'unin, Teglachas. Both of them, their hair has to be shaved off. And V'Teglachton, Betat, and it has to be Dafke with a razor. Afani, obvious, Amitzayde. So I could compare to, to Mitzayde, to both of them together, Shuton, Teglachas, where the Teda says that you have to cut all the hair, V'Teglachton, Betat, and it has to be Dafke with a razor. Okay, so that's the, the, the limud by Mitzayda. The, the source of Mitzayda is to learning it from Nazar and the Levim together. But still, you can't learn it out even from both of them together. Because there is a certain Chumre that both Levim and Nazar share together that Mitzayda does not have. What's that Chumre? The Lithroi, you can refute this limud because Malat Sada Shavashaban. When you learn both of them together, Levim and Nazir, Shekain and Karbonai Bedalis. By both of them, you have to bring Karbonis. And there's no such a thing, there's no leniency that if you pour, you could bring a cheaper carbon. You could bring Karbonis just from birds. Time of Mitzayde, however, what's the Allah by Mitzayde? Shekarbonai Bedalis. By Mitzayde, if you can't afford to bring an expensive carbon, so then you can bring birds. A cheaper carbon. So that shows that by Mitzayda there's a leniency. So how could you learn out from Levim and Nazir, which, is, which doesn't have this leniency? So we don't have a source for this, that by Mitzayda it has to be done, Dafka with a razor. Now there's another shayla that the Gemara asks over here, based on something that we learned before. Rav Bar Mesharshi had another question to Rav on this. Hi Tana. This is Tana that was quoted before. It's a Tana that we had before. It was at the beginning of that, uh, where was it? Maybe the beginning of that, what's it, was the beginning of this blot over here? Yeah, the beginning of that mem actually, the Gemara we learned yesterday. So right at the beginning of the Amud, the Gemara says, Meikara, Omar, what does he say? Lelamdoi mimitzayra. The Gemara quoted a Braise that said that maybe this step by Nazir, you have to cut the hair at the conclusion of the Naziris. It's Tafka with a razor. Where do you learn that out from? The Gemara said, the Braise said, let's learn it out from Mitzayda. And then the Braise said, E.F. Sure. No, you can't learn it out from Mitzayda. Why not? She'ain donin kal michomer lahachmer olav. I can't learn out a place which is more lenient from a place which is more stringent, that I should be machmer like this place which is stringent. In other words, what the Gemara said before is that by a Mitzayda, you have to cut the hair from the entire body, so it's much more stringent. By a Nazir, you only cut the hair from the head. So you can't learn out the fact that it has to be dafka with a razor from the Mitzayda, because the Mitzayda is more chomer. But the point is, what did the Braises say before? That by Nazir, the Taira is not so clear that the conclusion has to be, the cutting of the hair at the conclusion of the Naziris has to dafka be with a razor. When it says tar over there, it's really talking about the iser during his nasiris. And what did the Braises say? We're going to learn it out from Mitzayda. In other words, the, the Mitzayda, by Mitzayda, it is clear that it has to be dafka with a razor. That's what we said before. Now, Vahadarama, and then later we're saying, what are we saying now that it really works the other way around? Nalif Medina. That by Mitzayda, I have no source that has to be with a razor. And I, I'm trying to figure out what's the source for Mitzayda, and I'm going to learn out Mitzayda from Adin, which means here from the Tzad Shava that we just suggested. You're going to learn out Mitzayda from Levim and Nazir. And um, Medina Nami Lo Yalif. And the question that we asked before was that we can't even learn out from the Tzad Shava because there's a Pirche, there's a refutation to that Tzad Shava. So the Gemara is asking over here, something is very strange. Do we say that Mitzayda, it's clear by Mitzayda that it must be with a razor, there's some source by Mitzayda that it must be with a razor, and now we could maybe think to learn out Nazar from Mitzayda, or is it the other way around? By Mitzayda there's no source, and we're trying to learn out Mitzayda from Nazar and Levim. So this, uh, something's not clear over here in these Lemudim. 
So the Gemara answers, Amalei Ahu, Amalei, so Rava answered him, Hahu Alivu de Rabbanon, and Ha Alivu de Rabbeliezer. When we said before that by Mitzayda, there is a clear source that it has to be Dafka with a razor, that's following the Rabbanon's opinion, which the Gemara is going to quote now. And Ha Alivu de Rabbeliezer, this that we're saying now, that by Mitzayda, there is no source that it has to be with a razor, this is following Rabbeliezer's opinion. And the Gemara is going to explain both the Rabbanon's opinion, and Abeliezer's opinion. Abeliezer's opinion is going to be over here on Daf Mem. Abeliezer's opinion is going to be on Daf Mem Aleph. Okay, so what's Rabbanon's opinion about this? Where do you see by Mitzayre that it has to be done Dafka with a razor? In the Psukim by Mitzayre, when it says that he has to shave the hair from his body, it does not ever say in the title there a razor. So from where do you see this? So the Gemara says, it's a, it brings first a Mishnah in Mesech Makis, which talks Pachlal about the Iser of not cutting off the beard. And this will explain it. Nah, so the Mishnah says there in Makis, when a person cuts off the parts of the beard, so he's not chayiv, unless he cuts the beard with a tar, with a razor. Rabbi Yezah says, even if a person cuts the hairs from his beard, not with a razor, and not even with a scissors, not even with a utensil that's usually used to cut hairs. He uses a malkit or a hitni, which is like a thing called a plane, or some other carpenter tool that he uses. It's not usually used for, for shaving hair. Even then, he's going to be chayiv. That's the machlaikas. When are you chayiv for shaving or cutting off the hairs from the beard? Amai tamai derabonon. So now what's, the, when, it, when it says here, my tamai derabonon, the, the meaning of these words is not only what's the reason of the Rabbanon, but now the, the mother is really asking, so how does that show us regarding Mitzayre that I have a source by Mitzayre that it has to be Dafke with a razor? So now we look at what it says in the Pasik by Mitzayre. So the Tanya we learned in Abraise regarding a Mitzayre, the Pasik says, Zikonai, that the Mitzayre, when he shaves the hair from his body, and he has to shave all the hair of his body, so what does it say over there in the Pasik? That he should cut the hairs from his head and also the kone. He should cut off the, his beard as well. Why does the Torah have to specify that he has to cut the hairs from his beard? So the answer is the Torah specifies the beard because the Torah says that there's an iser. You're not allowed to cut the hairs from your beard. So that's the paaz ekonom, which is the five different areas from the beard that may not be cut. So yochel. I feel a mitzayde came. So I would think that this love that you now let it cut the hairs from the beard, this should apply even to a mitzayde. So that's why the Torah here says that the, the mitzayde does have to cut the hairs from the beard. That's uh, what the, what the Braise teaches me over here. Benigeya to a mitzayde. Okay, so just it's time to clarify that this is a big chiddush, and the reason why this is a chiddush, and this we learned this a while ago, in the Gemara of Yuvamis, the Isser, to cut the hairs from the beard, and this is this, this actually, the Torah writes it in two different places. In one place, the Torah writes it regarding a, every single Yid, not to cut the hairs from the beard, and the Torah then writes it regarding the Kayanim, specifically. The, the Psukim that the Gemara is quoting here comes from the Psukim that it says by the Kayanim, and by the Kayanim it says two different, it's a mitzvah sasei, that Kedoshim, remember the exact version of the Pasuk, it's a mitzvah sasei, that the Nile to cut the hairs from their beard, and it's also a mitzvah sleis sase, that a paz ekonom lo yigalecho. So here it comes out that this mitzvah sase of mitzayre, to cut the hairs from his beard, and together with all the hairs of his body, is deiche say a mitzvah sase and a mitzvah sleis sase. It's very unusual. That a klal, a mitzvah sase can't be deiche, a mitzvah sase and a mitzvah sleis sase. That's the chiddush over here. And the Gemara in, in Yuvamis explains it, that that mitzvah sase and mitzvah sleis sase is not shove bakoil. It's only by men and not by women. So therefore, it's a, that that's get, gets pushed off. That's the chiddush here. Okay, but now what's the point? We're trying to get to the idea that by mitzayda, I have a source that it has to be dafke with a razor, not with any other utensil. What's the source for this? So what the Gemara is trying to say over here is that if I'm going to say that the, that the cutting of the beard by the mitzayda is not done with a razor, so then there's bachlal no contradiction between the iser of cutting the beard and the mitzvah of cutting the beard by a mitzayda. Because there is that to cut the beard by, by Bechlal, as we just quoted before from the Rabbanon, is when? Only if it's done with a razor. Now you're telling me that there's a mitzvah to cut the beard by the mitzayda, and you need a special posik to say that he's allowed to cut his beard. Why do we need a special posik? Let him cut his beard without a razor. 
fact that the Torah has to tell me a special pasuk means that the Mitzayda does have to cut with the razor. So I need a special pasuk to teach me that he's allowed to do that. So the fact that the Torah specified the beard is the source by Mitzayda that has to be dafke with a razor. That's according to the Rabbanon. Now the Gemara here brings the source according to the Rabbanon that Bechlal, by the Isid of cutting the beard, it's dafke with a razor. That what's the, what's the, their the source? No, it doesn't say clearly. Uh, where, where, where? By, by, no, no, no. Go, by, by the isr of cutting the beard. By yeah. the isr of cutting the beard, the Gemara will now bring the source for this. Yeah. Now, right now, the Gemara brings the source for that. So, minol on the bitar. From where do I know that the isr that it says by a kayan not to cut off the beard, and that isr is not only by a kayan. We learn it out that it's for every single yid. But how do we know that it's dafka with a razor? Over there, it also doesn't say the fetish razor. So it is, the Gemara brings the price. The Tanya or Paaz the Kanam lo yegalechu. So it says, did not shave the hairs from the beard. Yachal afila gilcha b'misperayim. Yeh chayiv. I would think that even if he cuts it off with the scissors, he would also be chayiv. Tamad loimar lo v'loy sashchis. The Torah says the lashon of loy tashchis do not destroy the hairs, and with the scissors you can't cut so close to the skin where it destroys the hairs completely. So it has to be dafke shaved completely. That's the iser. And the Brayse continues and says, I would think that if a person cuts the hairs from his beard, then even if he's able to shave it very close to the skin, but he doesn't do it with the regular utensil that's used to cut the hairs. He uses carpenter tools to cut the, the hairs of the beard. I would think he would be chayiv as well. Tamud loimaru paas zekonam lo yigalecho. Paas zekonam lo yigalecho means don't use the usual utensil that's used to shave the hair. So not, not with this carpenter tool. So Hawk Kate said, what do I understand from this that the Torah says the word lo yigalechu, and it also says lo yisashchis, ezeo giluach sheyesh po yashchose, what's a shaving, which is using the normal utensil for shaving, but it also destroys the hairs completely, not just like a scissor. Have a zetar. The only utensil that does this is when you use a razor. So from here I see that the razor is the iser by cutting the hairs of the beard. So then by Mitzayre, when the Torah has to tell me especially that the Mitzayre should cut the hairs of his beard, why does it have to tell me that specially? Because he does have to cut with a razor. So that, that, that's the source, that even by Mitzayre, it's done with a razor. But on this the Gemara asks, how do you know, still it's not 100% clear, how do you know that by a Mitzayre it must be done with a razor? Maybe when the Torah is saying that cut the hairs of the beard by the Mitzayda, it's only coming to give you a hetter. That you're allowed, that the Mitzayda has to shave all the hairs of his body. He can do it in different ways. Maybe the Torah is only coming to give a hetter. That he's allowed to cut his beard with a, with a shave, but not that he has to. The point we're trying to say here is that we see in the Torah by Mitzayda that he must do a dafka with a, with a razor. But how do you know? Mimai, Dilme, maybe, La'oila, Mafila, Likta, Bimalkita, Birhitni, Nami Mitzvah Kabit. Maybe by the Mitzayda, even if he used other kinds of utensils, the Mitzvah is fulfilled. And Vahok Kasi Lashminon, but all the Torah is coming to tell me is, Da'afila, Bitar, Loi Mechayevala. That if he's shaving the hairs as by Mitzayda, he's not going to be Chay for the Issa of removing the beard. Because he's doing a mitzvah, so it's just coming to give him a hetter. Who says that he must do a dafka with a razor? So the Gemara gives two answers to this question, which is sort of two opposite answers. So, so Omri, they answer, the first answer is, If you're going to say, That it could be done. This is a mitzvah that could be done even with other kinds of utensils. Lav dafka with a razor. So then, if so, Lishtoi kro it wouldn't be necessary for the Torah to tell me that he has to remove the hairs of his beard. And the heter, that it could be done with a razor. I don't need the Pasuk to tell me especially that heter. The heter I would learn out already on my own. Because I would learn out the heter as follows. If I find by a Nazir that he's allowed to remove the hairs of his head with a razor. The isuraka of it. Now, when the Nazar removes the hairs from his head with a razor, he's also, be, he's also removing the pace, right? So, and nevertheless, he's allowed to remove that pace with a razor. Now, the Gemara says, a Nazar, what's a Nazar? A Nazar is an individual, the isuraka of it, that he did an Isser. What does the Gemara mean by this? The Gemara means that every single person that accepts upon himself Naziris, it's not a positive thing. It's considered to be an, an Isser. 
This is what the Gemara mentions many times, that it's not a good idea to accept Naziris upon yourself. It's also not a good idea to make Nadarim. A person accepts upon himself Naziris. It, there's, a, there's an aspect of an Issa here. Right, so by a Nazir, he's doing something which is really negative. But still the Torah allows him to remove the payas and with a razor. So he's obligated to remove the hairs of his head and even the payas of his head. So the hacha over here when it comes to a mitzayda, the mitzvah, he's doing a mitzvah. Meaning this mitzayda, he himself never accept upon himself this tzadas. The Eivish brought the tzadas upon him. True, it happened because of an Aveda, he said, Lashon Hara, whatever it is. But the fact is, he himself didn't do it. The Abishter brings it upon him. And now he has a mitzvah to bring these karbanas and cut the hair in order to conclude his, mitz- his, his, his tzaras that he had. So he's doing a mitzvah. Like Kol Shekem, most definitely I would say that over here, in order to shave the hairs from your head or from your beard as well, for sure you're allowed to do it even with a razor. So in other words, the point that Gemara is saying is, the fact that there's a hat to remove the hair with a razor, for that I don't need a special posik. For that I would just learn it out from a nazir. So why does the Torah have to write zikonoi by a, by a mitzayre? It's coming to tell you that it's not just a hat there, but that it's a mitzvah to remove the hairs of your head. Okay, let's just see the conclusion of the Indian here. The Gemara here brings another answer to explain why you can't say that when it says zikonoi by a mitzayre, that it's not just a hat there, but it's a mitzvah. And the so, another question would be, another raya for this rather is, and here the Gemara says sort of an opposite point. If you're going to say that that by this mitzvah, if he removes his beard, just with another utensil, that the mitzvah is done, it's good. Mitzvah kaavad, he's already done his mitzvah. So, uh, the Torah does not write the word tar, befetish, that it has to be with a... Uh, Razor. So therefore he could fulfill the mitzvah even with other utensils, if that's the case. And what do you want to say now? He has a heter to do it with a razor. But he doesn't have to do it with a razor. The mitzvah is done even without a razor because it never said befeirish in the Torah a razor. So if so, kireish lakish. Then I'll tell you that the, the halacha of rish lakish will apply over here. What did rish lakish say? The Amar, rish lakish said, kol makayim shatamaitza esa veloisesa. Anytime you have a situation where you have a mitzvah, and then you have a lav, and there's sort of a contradiction, there's a problem, you have to choose one over the other. So, but if you could find a way how you could fulfill both the essa and the lois essa, that's the best. Don't choose a way where you're going to have to nullify one of them. But then lav, if you have no option, then you're going to have to push off the lois essa. So the point that Gemara is saying is, there's no way you could say that by a mitzayda, you are allowed to cut off the hair to fulfill the mitzvah, or you could fulfill the mitzvah even with other utensils, but you're allowed to use a razor. Once you don't have to use a razor, so you're not allowed to use the razor anymore because you can't push off the laces of cutting off your beard. That's the cloud. If you could do it in a way where you're not going to push off the laces and your mitzvah will be done perfectly, there's, there's no reason to, to have to push it off. So therefore the point is, when the Torah writes Zekonai by Mitzayre, it's coming to say that it's done dafke with a razor. So according to the Rabbanon, we have a clear source by Mitzayre that it's dafke with a razor.